by the former Conservative Special Advisor Samuel Shah and Andrew Fisher, who was Director of Policy to the Labour Party under Jeremy Corbyn. Uh, great to have you both uh, on the show. Very fast-moving uh, evening for us. Um, you've advised Cabinet Ministers. How unusual is this kind of Cabinet call? This is exceptionally unusual. So outside of the Tuesday morning Cabinet meeting, Cabinet very rarely discusses things. So just the fact of a 7pm or you know nearly 8pm call uh, is something that is quite serious. And as Sir William Patey was saying earlier, you know, this, the, the level of the decision that is about to be taken will require some kind of discussion around the Cabinet table to stamp some sort of authority on it. So I think we can judge from that the seriousness of, of what we are about to see. And how sort of concerned are you about it? I think what it highlights is the extreme double standards. Here we are, the Houthis have been attacking shipping lanes. Um, no deaths so far, thankfully. Um, Israel's been bombarding Gaza for the last three months. Tens of thousands of people died, children being amputated without anaesthetic, and that's fine. No sanctions on Israel, no strikes against them, no arms well, I guess... embargo. But I the guess Houthis this is because of rebel, this is against the UK target, though, right? Is that not? It's because we don't care about international law or human rights. We have this rhetoric that we do, but we don't. This is absolute nonsense, and this whole conflict and is exposing that. We say that you know, the Iran-backed Houthi rebels. Well, they've been bombed by the US and UK-backed Saudi Arabia for the last ten years. Um, you know, actually, the last Labour. Um, administration was calling for sanctions on Saudi Arabia over this for um, an arms embargo. Hillary Benz, you know, somebody who's serving under Keir Starmer, was leading this within the last shadow cabinet. So, you know, we talk about this in completely bizarre ways that spins it into this sort of thing of one side is bad and the other side's crimes are airwashed. I mean, we've got a case in the International Court of Justice today brought by South Africa against Israel for genocide. We're not talking about that. We're talking about some interruption to shipping lanes. I mean, it's pretty small-scale stuff when tens of thousands of people are being killed. And, you, you know, I don't care what adjective you call it, whether you call it a massacre, a slaughter, ethnic cleansing, genocide, it doesn't really much matter. Tens of thousands of people are being killed, and we're not talking about that, we're talking about some shipping lanes. It's, it's perverse, but, really, uh, and the rest of the world can see it. Andrew, I, I recognise and respect your strength of feeling on this, and there'll be a lot of people who are watching this this evening who will empathise mm -hmm. and sympathise with your view. I think the only thing that I would say to that, and as, as glib as this may sound to you, is that we do have to deal with realpolitik. And the fact of the matter is that the Security Council passed a resolution on Wednesday that said its members could protect its own vessels, which is what we are attempting to do. And I, I understand that these mm -hmm. things are linked. I do, I do mm -hmm. not for one moment uh, separate what is happening mm -hmm. in Israel, Gaza, from the impact of this more widely. Mm -hmm. But what is incumbent upon us is to be able to protect our interests, as Sam rightly pointed out in his report. Mm. It is about what no, is happening that's to precisely industry. My point. That but, our priority but, but, is to what, protect I... our interests, not to protect but, human rights but, or international but, law. We but, don't care about those but, things I don't think unless they coincide with I our interests. I don't think it's that we don't care about those things. I, 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 I think well, I think it's important that they do coincide with our interests. But I also think that it's important that we take this moment where this actually, as, as we've said, as, as we mm. can all see, mm. this real tinderbox situation does not get any worse. And I also think that the UK government, alongside its US partner, needs to be very careful in its collaboration about, about whether it actually um, incites more violence in the mm. region. Because if they do take well, a decision tonight mm -hmm. that they are going to strike, we're going to have to try and understand in the aftermath what they have hit precisely. Because are we talking about potentially hitting civilian targets as well? You know, how much, how much collateral damage is there going to be? And there will be debate in the aftermath of that. But I don't think it is as clear cut as to say that we only like our own interests and we don't care about what's happening with the humanitarian situation in Gaza. Oh, I think that's, a, I think that's, a, false, arms. I think that's a false equivalence. We're still selling arms to Israel and so is the US, so they don't care. If we cared, we'd stop it. Look at what we've done with Russia, where we disapprove of their occupation of Ukraine. We've um, put sanctions on them. We've put sanctions on key officials. We've expelled diplomats. We haven't done any of that with Israel because hostile, we think it's fine. But Russia is a hostile state actor and has been for a very long time. But that's time. my point. It's, it's that you say it, our, our standards of human rights only apply because they're a bad actor, but because Israel's a good actor, an ally, it's fine for them I, to get away I, with human rights abuses. And I, look, I'm not criticising you. No, you're, no, look, we're, we're, having, the, we're having a discussion. We're putting the British to, government view, which we, is what I'm saying is entirely partial. It doesn't believe in universal human rights. It believes in defending human rights where they coincide with our interests. Where they don't, 
they're Speci completely can disposable. Can I just ask you specifically on the shipping? And mm. I absolutely take your point that mm. these are not things that you can just view in isolation, mm. right? This mm. is a this mm. is a conflict, and we've all mm. got to make decisions about the whole of the region. Mm. Everything is linked. Mm. But just on the shipping, mm. what do you think the UK government should do? Well, look, the, it's a vital trade route for the UK and Europe and more widely as well. So of course. We want to protect that. I don't necessarily say that's wrong. I'm just pointing out the double standard in we care about that, but we don't care about thousands of dead Palestinians. Because um, if we did, we'd do the things we did against Russia when it was killing Ukraine and is killing Ukrainian civilians on, on a albeit smaller scale. But um, of course we should protect our trade routes and of course we don't want terrorist actions against shipping because it's civilian shipping. You know, the people on board these ships are not military actors. They need to be protected. I, I totally 